Okay, so today we are going to be replacing both oxygen sensors. I'm going to begin with the one located behind the engine, looking from the front. Um, I've already removed the air intake. My air intake is not the original factory air intake. Uh, yours might be the original. Uh, mine was very, very simple to, to remove, uh, and I have done so. Giving a little bit of clearance and an idea where the O2 sensor's at. You have this clip connector here. The sensor itself is located behind the engine. Of course, it's important to note that it is extremely hot and ill-advised to attempt to remove an oxygen sensor with a warm engine but uh, first things first let's begin by removing this here connector try not to use any prying tools when dealing with old connectors such as the this one should just slide out depending how crispy your car is this has this plastic retainer for the cable don't pull on it what a flat screwdriver you can get in and try to pry it off there you go as you can see it's like a little clamming clamping action going on to remove this uh connector Depends how crispy, I'm trying to do this with one hand, but depends how crispy the car is. Sorry, I could not show you how to do this with one hand. You have to wiggle around. I did, did a little bit of wiggling around this connector. And if you push this down, this little clip, you can pull out the connector. Uh, I strongly advise against tugging on the wires. But yeah, this... That, that, that's it and this is basically the wire for the for the sensor and now we are taking care of the sensor here we've employed the use of one of these 22 millimeter seven and seven eighths uh, oxygen sensor tools very very hard to get in here with anything other than that so uh, I tried with a 7 8 fixed wrench like we did uh, below it, it's not gonna work it, it just I mean if, if you can do it good job go ahead and just unthread the oxygen sensor very little working room I guess when they decided to, you know, they, they, they had a meeting, you know, at Volkswagen. And they said, oh, let's put the sensor in a more more difficult place, you know. And this is it. This is how it looks like with the O2 sensor removed. This is the old sensor. Now we will be installing the new sensor. Very simple, by the way, just a side note, if you are confused between uh, which one's which, they're, they're, they're different, there's the upstream and downstream, but they have two different connectors that will not correspond uh, with, with both locations. So that's how you know, because I, they change these every now and then so you might be looking and might be saying well the holes look different on top once again same thing check for anti-seize apply even more anti-seize if necessary like I said applying a little bit more anti-seize is not gonna kill it especially especially on the little crush washer there or just washer whatever it is don't put anything in any uh, up top I don't, want to, I don't want to mess with the readings and 
There you go. <sighs> yep. If you hold it, if you hold a pigtail, pigtail from the top, it'll make it a lot easier threading the, um, the O2 sensor in place. And yes, side note, don't drop anything in there. I already did, twice. Minus one, well, minus two, and an extension. There you go. Now that we got the love out of the way, grab your little frog foot. and fish it on down. <sighs> Sorry about the camera shots. This camera guy I'm hiring. It's not the best. All right. Now, if you're not sure that you're doing a good job, don't worry about it. You're not the first one. Okay, 3 8 ratchet is on. Go ahead and tighten the O2 sensor down. Make sure it's spinning. It's in there, alright? It ain't leaving. No, I don't know the torque specs on this, so don't bother me asking. Here you go. Try not to lose your tools in there. Like I said, I already did. Twice. Today. Once again, I'm gonna try to do this with my with one hand. Let me see. Yep. Yeah, okay. No, no, no. Genius design. Yeah, the other way. Yep, yep, yep. Nope, wait, wait, wait. There you go. Don't forget, secure all these wires to their corresponding locations. Because, unless you missed it, there's a lot of heat in this particular area of the vehicle. All right, here we are below the car. Very uncomfortable, but very necessary. I just knocked this sensor out loose, thankfully, with a seven eight. I will show you more, but uh, yeah, this is very uncomfortable. <sighs> sensor is located below the car, obviously. Engines that way. <clears throat> Knock it out. Take it out. And the wire, if you follow the wire, you can see. So I have to twist it around. It goes underneath this aerodynamic overpriced protection. Little plastic retainers here, obviously. This entire car is plastic. You have to remove. Right then, here we are with the fancy piece of aerodynamic plastic on, which serves to protect your fuel lines, your fuel filters over there, by the way, if anyone's interested. This here is your connection. If you're, for your O2 sensor, you can snip this off if you want. Here's with a better shot. Oxygen sensor comes around this way, the, the wire for it, the cable. Goes into this plastic retainer, which you're gonna have to kind of mess around with and, and get angry at it. 
then obviously like I told you you can snip the connector off up to you if it's busted I don't like doing that I'm gonna have to remove this connector simply push this tab in with your thumb I like to do it with my thumb it's very hard to show you but do it with your thumb and then you pull the connector out very simple there you go don't don't snip this side off that'll that'll be embarrassing you know that's that's not good then your sensor which I have knocked loose with once again a 7 8 socket should come off it is important to note that I have used WD-40 as a pen penetrating lube now you can kind of tell how snipping off the pigtail could help but I don't like to do that Applying heat is an option in case in case it doesn't work. You just don't want to damage anything. Obviously, you don't care about the cable, but you know what I mean. You don't want to start a fire. So if you can knock it, if you can knock it out with penetrating oil, that's great. That's 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 the best case scenario. But this car does have a hundred thousand miles, over a hundred thousand miles, about a hundred and ten thousand miles last time I checked. And that's it. Look at it. Beautiful, isn't it? The old unit, you can try cleaning it if you want. Not uh, recommended. Well, uh, it's really up to you. It's, sometimes cleaning it works. And, if, and sometimes focusing the camera works too. There you go, focus, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to replace mine. Um, this is the new unit. New unit, it's kind of identical, it's got a little plastic cover that I don't want to remove until installation. Kind of identical, it's from Bosch. This important to know that this little piece of fat shielding right here is a little wide this will interfere if you want to use a socket a uh, oxygen sensor removal socket so that's why I had to use a fixed wrench to knock out the old one this does come with some anti-seize pre-applied of course I cannot stress enough how important it is to apply anti-seize, especially if none is applied on the threads of this uh, of this oxygen sensor. As you can see, there's anti-seize applied on the sensor, on the threads of the sensor, not on the sensor. Because next time you try to remove this, this will weld itself to the pipe if you're not uh, careful and apply anti-season. It could cause a, a host of problems. With that being said, let's install the new unit. Right then, with the new sensor on hand, go ahead and begin threading the new unit. The new, I'm sorry, the new sensor. Make sure you don't accidentally cross thread anything. May or may not go in easy. That's what I'm saying. Remember, old pipes. After a few minutes of wiggling and I'm struggling go ahead and tighten this this thing down don't forget the NICs well I mean before you tighten it down before you even thread it down very important to put NICs let's leave it at that So after all that, after you thread it down, after NICs, 
go ahead and just tighten it down. Not too much. It's not going anywhere. And then the wire. Route it back the way it's supposed to be routed. And connect it back to your vehicle wiring harness. Important to note that the replacement Bosch sensor was a little bit longer. The wire for it. The fitment was perfect on the pipe. It's not a problem. But the wire, oh yes, a little bit longer. So I just looped it around this piece here. And now it is connected just the way it's supposed to be. There you go. I'll just move that for you so you can see. That's it. Don't forget to reinstall your aerodynamic plastic shielding, whatever you want to call it, whatever they call it. Yes, these are 10 millimeter fasteners. A little driver with a 10 millimeter. Let me see, 10 millimeter. Yeah, a little driver with a 10 millimeter will be more than sufficient to drive these plastic um, retainers home. And yes, these uh, these do not fall out. You just undo them, and and that's it. They they keep themselves in place. With that being said, this concludes this video. Don't forget to reinstall your mass airflow sensor. After you reinstall your, uh, well, uh, your intake and then your mass airflow sensor connection, then uh, I'm pretty much ready to go. With that being said, this concludes this video. Have a nice day.